What's going on, everyone? Mike back doing a PSA DNA reveal. PSA DNA is the service offered by PSA for autograph authentication and encapsulation of trading cards. This is a 160 card order sent in early April, I believe, 2020, coming back here in late September. So obviously due to the shutdown, PSA DNA, uh, even a little further behind than some of the regular PSA grading orders, but they do overlap with PSA to identify and authenticate cards as well. So you're going to have the full flip with full trading card information, uh, no autograph grading. I get people asking me that all the time. And honestly, I would never pay a penny more for an authenticated autograph with a grade on it. So why would I pay any more money to get an autograph graded? Um, that's just me. Some people love it. Not for me. To me, identifying whether an autograph looks really good or not uh, is pretty simple. You look at it. It's placed in a good spot. It's full. It pops. It's good. Um, sometimes you have autographs that don't look so good. It is what it is. Anyway, just thought I would uh, get that out of the way because I get comments on these videos very often asking about uh, grading and why I don't get the autographs graded. All right, so let's get into this. Most of these cards are mine, but I will start off with some cards that I got done for others when I was doing the group submissions. So first one is for Clay F. And he had a 1969 Topps Reggie Jackson that was PSA DNA certified authentic. So authentic autograph on the Reggie Jackson. Pretty epic card there for Clay. So congratulations, Clay. Definitely uh sweet card for the collection. We got some cards for Adam D. A few for Adam. He's got a 2005 Playoff Honors Larry Fitzgerald. Authentic. An Eli Manning, which is clearly mislabeled. Pretty certain that's not a 1979 Tops. Got a 2004 Tops James Lofton, which I'm pretty sure is mislabeled. Pretty certain that should be a 1979 Tops. It's authentic. BSA is pretty good with uh, getting that taken care of, but obviously you do have an added wait time. It will take a while to get them back. 79 Tops Ozzie Newsom, authentic. So those are some cards for Adam. We've got Dayton. Dayton with a few cards. This is pretty amazing here. 1994 Stadium Club, Wayne Gretzky. The nice blue auto. 1959 tops, Felipe Alou. There's actually two Felipe Alou's in this order. I have one as well. 2019 Panini Elite Extra Edition, Bobby Witt Jr., Optochrome, which this card looks really nice in person. Doesn't look amazing on camera um, because obviously you have all that reflection in there because the card is just so uh, so bright but looks awesome. The signature pops in person. All right, we got some for Nick. So Nick's order, unfortunately, I don't think he's going to be thrilled with. Got a whole bunch that were not slabbed. So you got Kareem Abdul Jabbar, no holder. I guess they did not identify the card. Um, same thing with this Kareem Abdul Jabbar. A Chevy Chase was no holder because of the card. This one's an N4, so those other ones weren't charged. I mean, it's still disappointing when you have cards out five months and you don't get them authenticated. But, uh,. This Tom Selleck, which is awesome looking, uh, questionable authenticity, so that's a charge. And then uh, no holder for this Jerry Jones. So only one of them is a charge, but obviously there's four there that would have loved to have slabbed. I guess the options are to go with Beckett, perhaps. Beckett might um, take care of them. Or I guess there's the possibility of sending just a PSA DNA uh, New Jersey office, totally different service, probably cost more actually than this. 
uh, but they might authenticate the autographs and just put trading card. But they PSA has really gotten away from that in recent years. So 2019 tops Allen and Ginter, Travis Pastrana, authentic, super sweet Ginter. And then this card looks pretty sweet as well. 1996 SPX Ron Gant. Look at that. Turn that, and he smiles as he sees that that autograph is authentic. Really cool looking card, and that blue signature does pop very well on the background of that card. So, awesome there for Nick. Now we got cards for Ben J. And then we're going to have Ed. So Ben's got one as well. Kenny uh, Easley. This uh, Pro Football Hall of Fame card. So just like that Jerry Jones. Rest of them, though, did get slabbed. 2007 Playoff Prestige. Eli Manning. 2007 Topps Hall of Fame class. Roger Worley. That looks great. Personally, as an autograph collector, I definitely prefer the blue signatures. Most of the time, they do look better. Obviously, there's some exclusions. This is a 2012 Panini score David Akers numbers game. Glossy. But it depends how you're acquiring autos. Sometimes you just got to settle for the black. That's all that's available. Or if you're doing it through the mail. 2018 Panini Rookies and Stars for Sean Evans. Authentic. Same thing with collecting pack pulled cards as well. 2018 Panini Status Rudy Gobert. Authentic. You know what? These were sent in uh, right around the time of the shutdown because I do remember the Rudy Gobert. I remember feeling kind of funny about sending him in because he was uh, the first athlete to test positive. There's another one. Anyway, back to the pack pulled autographs. On card, always better. Always the preference, but there are some players or uh, certain things that you just have to settle, and all they make is the sticker autos. So the sticker autos can look good, but to me, on card is always better. 2010 Panini Rookies and Stars, Vince Carter, authentic. 1994 Fleer Team Leaders, Paul Molitor, MVP of the 1993 World Series. Here's a guy who was signing for a while, a lot, and I missed out on. Uh, 1996 Upper Deck, Larry Walker. It's another card. Looks really nice in person. Going to be a little dark on screen. But very cool. He'll be inducted into the Hall of Fame next year. Was elected this past offseason, but ceremonies and inductions were postponed for a year. So 1960 Tops, Irv Noren. Cool 60 Tops Cubs card. Got a duel here. 1990 Kmart. Tony La Russa, Roger Craig. Couple former big leaguers and longtime managers, and obviously La Russa, Hall of Famer. And a 1960 Tops Bob Serve, authentic. So that's it for Ben J. And final one before we get to my piles is for Ed. Ed not happy with this. His boy, Gabe Kapler, 2015 tops Allen and Genter, was given questionable authenticity. Now, Kapler does have uh, a sloppy signature, as you can see, but Ed did acquire this at the Phillies ALS Festival a couple years ago. So this was an in-person autograph that received questionable authenticity. Again, I can understand because Kapler has um, a really sloppy signature, but it's definitely disappointing. All right, so Ed's got uh, one really awesome card and a bunch of Phillies that people will roll their eyes at, but I can fully appreciate them. It's awesome. And you're going to see some of the same stuff uh, out of me. I'm going to have some Hall of Fame autographs, and I'm going to have some obscure Phillies that people are going to be like, what? Anyway, 1997 Fleer, Ron Blazer, former Phillies reliever, around for a couple years. Quite honestly, I'm surprised PSA has any way to identify his signature, but 
that's a pretty cool one there. 97 Fleer, just such a cheap card. It's like the cheapest card stock ever. But that's awesome. So that's cool, Ed. Here's the big one. He's got a 2011 Tops Kimball Champions, Clayton Kershaw. That's awesome looking. First of all, love the tobacco size cards. Love the Kimball Champions look great. Blue Signature, future Hall of Famer. That's awesome. So congrats. Big time on that one. Here's a guy that um, a lot of us Phillies fans like to rag on a lot, but he actually had a very good 2020. Andrew Knapp. So I'm going to go out on a limb and assume there have not been many Andrew Knapp autographs authenticated by PSA DNA and encapsulated. Quite frankly, he doesn't have many cards. I think he's got like one Topps card and Topps Now card. I think he has a Topps Now or two actually now. He might have had a couple come out this year. But Ed got this one signed, got that slabbed up for the Obscure Phillies PC. Dickie Thon. Dickie Thon is actually the first uh, player I ever got an in-person autograph from, so this is cool. I actually have some Dickie Thons I should probably send in for the collection because the cards just present so well in the slabs. They look great, kind of enhances the look of them. You have all the authentication. You have the identification. It's just a fun way to collect autographs. Obviously, it comes at a price. comes with an expense, but that's cool. Dickie Thon had a really nice 1989 he was a good player, but uh, had some injury issues. I believe he got hit, what, in the face at one point? This is a 2016 Topps Jeff Francoeur. One of the nicest guys in baseball. Had some really nice years in Atlanta and then kind of bounced around a little bit and seemed to be uh, popular wherever he was. No different here in Philadelphia. I believe he spent parts of two seasons with the Phils. So that's a nice one for Ed's collection. And then his final one is a fantastic player. This is a beautiful card. 1993 Opera Deck, awesome for autographs. Inscribed Nails, Lenny Dykstra, Beast in 93. Uh, had a great career with the Phillies. Lost a lot of time due to injuries, but he's also certified nuts. So there's no doubt about that. He's, uh, he's a little, he's a little uh, out there, but hell of a freaking ball player for sure so that is super cool ed and that wraps it up for everyone else's stuff gonna get into mine uh, i have big stack of phillies and big stack of allen and ginters and a few others so this is all stuff for the collection super happy to get it back into the collection after being away for a few months so first 2019 top silver pack will clark pulled this from a pack Thought it looked awesome. Made up a TTM, sent it out to Will Clark, came back, and uh, really wanted to get it encapsulated for the collection. Looks so sweet. Nice shine. 2002 Upper Deck, Phil Rizzuto, World Series Heroes. Authentic. My uncle actually got this for me at a wedding quite a while ago, obviously, at this point. But, uh, you know, had a couple of these raw for a while. Sent one in at one point and then sent this one in. So happy to have that one secured in the PSA DNA holder. We got a Jimmy Key, 1989 Tops. Big fan of 89 Tops. I think that signature looks really nice in blue. Matching with the Blue Jays Uni. Jimmy Key, really good big league career. Got a couple of football. 2014 Tops, Derek Carr. Authentic. He's uh, played pretty well overall this season. So, very simple signature there for Derek Carr. Here's a cool one. 2015 Panini Father's Day, Rob Ninkovich, Road to Super Bowl Relic. So, you get a piece of pylon, I believe. And a signature in gold, which definitely that gold signature can look pretty amazing if the light hits it right. So, pretty cool. Has the JSA authentication that they slapped on it at a show that it was got that it was done at. But very cool. 
Got a duel here of Nick Williams, Reese Hoskins. Only uh, only issue with this is wish Reese would have signed it straight across there. It definitely would have looked a little better, but hey, still nice to have. Hopefully he gets healthy, missed the end of 2020. And uh, there's potential for Tommy John surgery. Well, I hope it won't be necessary, but who knows. And Nick Williams, in his time in Philadelphia, played very well. Um, but after the Bryce Harper signing, just basically lost his kind of role. Was a bench player last year. This year was on the 40-man roster at the beginning of the season, didn't play, and then got shipped off to Cincinnati once once they needed a spot. So good luck to him in future endeavors. 1998 Leaf Rookies and Stars, Eric Moulds. Authentic, so that's cool. Uh, Eric Moulds had a really good career. Played very, very well with the Bills. And, uh, you know, a lot of these guys who were really good players for a while, made some Pro Bowls and such, kind of just get forgotten, especially in the new age of the NFL where everyone's putting up all these crazy numbers. But that's a cool one there. I remember watching him with my brother. All right, let's get into more. We're going to start into the Allen and Ginters. I think we'll start off with some Phillies and then work our way into some Hall of Famers. So... This is kind of a duel. He's a Philly and a Hall of Famer. 2013 tops Allen and Ginter, Jim Bunning. Bunning was an awesome signer. Passed away a number of years ago, but he used to sign a ton. So made it was a no-brainer for me to send to him to uh, get some stuff signed, especially the Allen and Ginter. So pretty awesome one there. We got a Jake Thompson. I essentially took every Philly's Ginter I had and just sent him in in this order. I just decided I wanted them all slabbed. Ginter, collector, Phillies collector. Figured why the heck not. I mean, clearly Jake Thompson is not a valuable autograph. He was acquired in the Cole Hamels trade. Spent some time with the Phillies. Don't know his current whereabouts. But he was a highly touted prospect once upon a time. We've got the Roman Quinn. Roman Quinn. This guy has a ton of talent, super fast, and he can he can wreak havoc on the game, on the base paths, and you know beating out those infield and bunt hits. He drives the ball into the outfield, you know, he on third base in a blink of an eye. It's all about health with him, health and consistency. But a Roman Quinn, got Jorge Alfaro, solid major league player. Had uh, had some success in Philadelphia with the Phils, but he was shipped off to Miami along with Sixto Sanchez to acquire JT Real Muto. So we'll see. Real Muto uh, played well in Philadelphia. He is a free agent this offseason, so we'll see uh, how things develop there. I feel like it's it's a low percentage play when you're trying to re-sign a player who reaches free agency. It, it seems like usually they get a better offer, so I'm not feeling confident there. Phils did give up a lot. I mean, Miami reached the postseason this year. They got Alfaro as a catcher, Sixto Sanchez in the rotation. Phillies are at home uh, with Real Muto about to become a free agent. So it's looking like Miami might have gotten the best of that deal. Same Michael Franco. Played all 60 games with the Royals this year. I haven't seen his statistics lately, but... I feel like he's one of those guys who's a useful major league player. Never going to be the star that some thought he could be coming up through the Phillies organization, but definitely had some good memories watching him in Philadelphia. And that's the thing with the Phillies autographs. I mean, I can think back to all the different games and different times I saw these guys play. 2013, Alan Ginter, Ben Revere. Hit over 300 in his time in Philadelphia. Tommy Joseph, he was acquired in the Hunter Pence trade. Hunter Pence just recently retired. But another trade that worked out for the Giants. Uh, Hunter Pence shipped there. They ended up winning multiple World Series. Tommy Joseph, big-time catching prospect. Had some concussion problems, really couldn't catch anymore. Became a first baseman. And, you know, he was with the Phils for a couple years, but eventually faded away. We got Jamie Moyer. It's a cool one. Jamie Moyer pitched forever, pitched into his late 40s. Very long major league career and a member of the 2008 World Champion Phillies. So it's awesome. We 
Is it Wes Helms? I remember him coming up. I remember him being in Bowman cards in the late 90s, being a big prospect for the Braves. So Wes Helms. Remember the 2007 Phillies that finally broke through and reached the postseason after a long drought? And another one here, Dominic Brown. Man, you got to shake your head at this guy. Number one prospect in baseball at one point, ranked ahead of Mike Trout. Coveted prospect. Teams were uh, banging on the door, wanted him from the Phils. He was one of the reasons Roy Halladay wasn't a Philly earlier. The Blue Jays were insisting on Dominic Brown. They ended up working out a different deal in the offseason, and you know, Halliday ended up in Philadelphia and had a nice career there, but it would have been interesting if they got him a year earlier. Dominic Brown had one incredible half for the Phillies, was uh, actually on a tear for like a month, and uh, reached the All-Star game, had a rough second half, and just was never the same after that. Just eventually found his himself non-tendered, went to Toronto for part of a year, then was in the Rockies organization, never cracked the big leagues with them. And last I heard, I think last season, he was on an independent team trying to convert to be a pitcher. So, yeah, things uh, did not work out there. But he's in Philly's lore as an all-star, so part of Philly's history. It's an Aaron Altair on the 2018 Ginter. I actually saw him play a little bit this year in the South Korean League. Watching some of those games at 4 a.m. And uh, saw him play a little bit there. Let's see, 2012 Allen Ginter, Vance Worley. He actually had a lot of success with the Phillies when he uh, came up. Then he was involved in a trade sent to Minnesota and, uh, you know, had some ups and downs in Minnesota and bounced around to a few different teams. Was actually a free agent this year. At one point, there was some kind of thought that the Phillies might bring him back. Didn't happen, but one of his first major league starts uh, went to a game, had some really great seats, went to a game with a friend of mine. Uh, my dad and my uncle, so that was the last game I got to go to with my uncle, so it's just one of the reasons, you know, collecting cards is so much fun, and, you know, you don't need to collect all the biggest names or all the most expensive cards, and I know the rage right now in the hobby is all about value, 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 and investment, 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 well, invest in your own personal collection, and I love the Hall of Famers, and I love uh, the rookie cards, but sometimes I like cards that just remind me of life, of moments in time, and that's why you collect the teams and the players you love. So everything's going to have meaning to different people. Here's a 2007 Tops, Charlie Manuel. That's awesome. At the helm of the 2008 World Champions, Charlie Manuel, Wall of Famer. Awesome dude. That's so cool. Obviously another incredible card for the collection. It's Mike Lieberthal feel like he's kind of gotten forgotten a little bit in Philadelphia. This guy had a really good career with the Phils. Unfortunately for him, he was with the Phils in the big leagues from 94 through 2006. The entire length of their non-playoff uh, seasons. 93, they won the NL pennant. And then 2007, the year he left, they ended up in the postseason winning the division. But uh, Lieberthal, fantastic player. Defensively, offensively, won some awards. Um, really good player. Had a nice career, so that's a cool one there. He is in the Phillies' wall of fame. But since then, I mean, they have Real Muto uh, now. Well, through this season they had him. And then they had Carlos Ruiz in the past, so they've had some pretty, uh, pretty good catchers. All right, we'll move into some others here. 2007, Ginter, Marion Dreddy. Not, you know, a huge fan of the racing stuff, but I collect Ginters. So if I have a chance to pick up some of the celebrities or the non-baseball ones at good prices, I'll always pick them up, um, but I generally won't overpay for them. 2006, Ginter, John Lieber. He's another guy who had a really good career. Had some great seasons with the Cubs. He actually had an underrated year with the Phils. His first year in Philadelphia, he won like 17 games, I think, 16 or 17, really quietly. But he was he was 
he did a good job with the Phillies. You know, that was in the early 2000s. They didn't quite get to where they wanted to, but, you know, he did a... He did some good stuff, so that's a neat one. Here's an awesome one. Some of these required TTM, others acquired um, through trades or uh, in person, and some were acquired through private signings and purchases after private signings. So that's where the Willie McCoveys came from. So this is awesome. 2014 Ginter, Willie McCovey. Looks great. And the 2013 Allen and Ginter, one of the nicest years. Just a big fan of that. So Willie McCovey of the Giants. Awesome. Reggie Jackson. Sweet card in the A's uni. The yellow and green. We've got a 2015 Allen and Ginter, Carlos Santana. The Santanas were acquired at the Phillies ALS Festival. He's had a good career, much better with Cleveland. Spent one year in Philadelphia. This was a TTM, C.C. Sabathia, potentially a future Hall of Famer. 3,000 strikeouts, had a really brilliant career. I think he's got a great shot to get in, but... It's got a four or five year wait, so we will see what happens. So JT Real Muto. 2019 Ginter is very nice. Generally speaking, I do like it every year of Ginter, and they're always fantastic for autographs. One of the reasons I enjoy collecting them. But JT Real Muto, probably the top target in free agency he might be the number one free agent um good at calling games good defensively throws out a ton of runners and produces offensively he, he runs well he kind of does it all so early reports are the yankees will show interest i know the nationals and Braves supposedly the mets you know the mets are going to open up their pocketbooks and sign away a ton of players so i would love to see him back in philadelphia but i'd probably be a little surprised 2007 tops, Joe Torre. That's sweet. Hall of Fame manager, Yankees. Got that TTM, so that's very cool. And here is a second one. Got a 2007 top, Stanley Glenn. It's cool. I had a chance to buy some more of these at one point and, uh, you know, never uh, didn't grab them. But this is awesome. Philadelphia Stars, Stanley Glenn. So this is kind of a dual PC, too, because you got the Philadelphia representation. So very, very cool. Here's one that I know. My buddy Ed, a.k.a. Wesker Griffin, love. Guy Fieri, 2011. Tops Allen and Ginter. Flavortown. Bought this one raw. A couple bucks. It was a must-buy for sure. And it was a must-send-in. Another Carlos Santana. Good-looking card there. Here's one that is reintroduced into the collection. So, this is from 2012 Ginter, and it's the Highlight Sketches. I got one of these via TTM that was signed in black, got it authenticated and slabbed, and honestly, I just didn't like the way it looked. I do from time to time hear people say, oh, I don't care, an autograph's an autograph. An autograph's an autograph to people who don't really collect or care about autographs, but an autograph is not an autograph to someone who likes autographs. The placement matters... The way it's signed, the color, whether it pops, whether it looks good, that all does matter. Obviously, we settle for non-perfection from time to time, of course, and sometimes we don't have a choice, but that's the thing. I hear people say that, too. It's like, oh, it's a sticker autograph. I don't care. An autograph's an autograph. I'm like, well, there's never once in the history of autographs been a card that looked better signed on a piece of scotch tape slapped on a card than signed on the card itself. So... 
again, I'll, I'll buy sticker autographs and I get sticker autographs out of packs and I'll keep some in the collection, but it's never preferred. My point in all of that little mini rant is I had one of this card. It was signed in black. It wasn't the best of signatures. It was a little scrunched up and I just, I didn't like the way it looked. So I'd sent again to Sandberg who signs uh, for a fee slash donation. This one came back in blue, looked exceptionally, it looked exponentially better. So I said, you know what? I'm going to get it slabbed. And I took the other one and sold it. And someone added it to their collection. They were happy with it and they liked it, which is awesome. But this is so much better looking. First of all, the blue pops more. It looks a little better. It matches the Cubs uniform. So that's the little ways you can upgrade your collection a little bit if you truly care about the way it looks. Now, there's a lot of people who only care about the label when it comes to grades. They don't even look at the card. And it's all subjective, and everyone does and collects what they want and how they want. But if you atten pay attention to the details, if you're really into it, there's little ways that you can definitely improve your collection from time to time and not settle for things that you don't truly like. I mean, you, you get it, and you kind of are happy with it, but eventually you find a way to do a little better. It's so a 2017 Topps Allen and Ginter, Brooks Robinson. Brooks has been a really good signer over the years. Yeah, she has another Ginter this year. He's one of those guys who seems to be in it year after year. Here's a card. I tried to purchase this card raw so many times. 2013 Allen and Ginter, Joe Morgan. This one was acquired uh, on eBay raw from someone who does private signings and you know a lot of he has a great reputation so his auctions go for more than you know one random one that someone is selling and uh i just got outbid so many times and finally i won one and got this sent in so happy to get this joe morgan back there's a bob gibson on the 2013 ginter Awesome Hall of Fame career for Bob Gibson. There's a Bill Mazeroski. Beautiful signature. 13 1 looks great. So that's an awesome looking card. Here is a Don Mattingly on the 2016. Most likely National League Manager of the Year as the Miami Marlins reached their first postseason in a long time. Third in club history fun fact the miami marlins slash florida marlins have never won a division title yet they've won two world series in their previous two times in the playoffs they did win it all 2016 alan ginter jake arietta always be remembered for his part on the cubs world championship team so that's a neat card to have but yeah, the Marlins. Marlins fans have never felt the agony of postseason defeat. So we'll see what happens this year. It is 2020. It's a crazy year. 2018 tops Allen and Ginter, Jim Tomei. Clean, beautiful signature. Hall of Famer. Cleveland Indians. Icon. Beautiful card. Definitely a fan favorite. One of my favorites. Sweet, sweet Jim Tomei. 2018 Ginter, Dave Winfield. In that yellow Padres uniform. It's a cool card. Padres looking good going into the postseason as well. We're slumping a little bit, but it looks like the offense is uh, getting things together a bit. 2013 tops Allen Ginter, Ozzie Smith. It's a nice Ozzie. Wade Boggs. He's been a great T Tammer over the years as well. 2018. Authentic Weed Boggs. Another Brooks Robinson. 2012 Brooks Robinson. I haven't sent him in a while. I haven't really sent anything out in a long time. I actually have a few that came back over the last couple months. I have to show off in video a few autographs, but I don't know. Really feel bad kind of sending guys stuff through the mail right now. 2018 Ginter, Pat Neshek. For the Phillies collection slash fellow autograph collector slash fellow card collector PC. 
Moving into some Phillies here on the Ginter. 2018 Reese Hoskins. See what his future holds. He's got to get healthy. Is it Nick Williams? Roger Clemens. I got a few Clemens. A few that I got through his foundation at one point. That one, I believe, I purchased as part of a lot. 2016 Ginter Trevor Story rookie card. Pretty cool card there. Ian Kinsler had himself a nice career. Some great years with the Texas Rangers, part of a few pennant winning teams. Ryan Zimmerman, Mr. National, did not play in 2020, but he did win a World Series in Washington. He was uh, kind of the first national, so he had a really long career. Definitely one of those guys that. Uh, kind of broke down over the years so he didn't compile the statistics that at one point people thought he might so he's not going to ever be a hall of fame or anything like that but he's certainly someone who will have his number retired most likely i'd assume be kind of inducted into whatever the nationals have in terms of a wall or a hall of fame or whatever ring of honor i know teams call it different things but i would think he will uh, absolutely get all those accolades in washington once he officially uh, calls it a career Adam Wainwright had a brilliant career with the Cardinals. In some big moments, part of some championship teams. Here's a guy who's still amazing. Nelson Cruz. What a career this guy's had. Can you imagine if he came up at a younger age or developed a little earlier? This guy would have easily hit 500 home runs. I mean, he might still have a shot at it as we... Speak and he's in his early 40s. I mean, I don't know that he'll get there, but he hasn't really shown a sign of slowing down quite yet. He's a 2010 bon Ben Zobrist. Ben Zobrist, really good player. Part of the 08 Tampa Bay Rays that won the pennant. He was on the Kansas City Royals World Championship team. He was on the Cubs World Championship team. So really good player. Really useful player that uh, made an impact on the different organizations he was a part of. Here's an amazing autograph signer, Hall of Famer, Bobby Doerr. Lost him a few years ago, but man, he was an amazing signer. Just uh, fantastic. Really never slowed down. And, uh, you know, was held the title of the oldest living Hall of Famer for quite a while. Bobby Doerr. That's a great looking card. Adam Jones. This guy had a really good career with the Orioles. Got moved last year. This year he opted to play overseas. I think he was in Japan. But dynamic player for a long time. Hall of Famer Jim Rice. It's a nice Jim Rice. Nice signature. Had to send him twice. He does charge a fee. It was pretty low. I don't know if it's risen over the years because I got that a couple years ago. But I remember I sent a check and it came back cash only. So I had to send cash. 2015, Alan Ginter, Jake Arrieta. His time in Philadelphia has come to an end. We'll see where he ends up next year. He wasn't exactly good this year, but he wasn't bad. He's one of those guys who had... Some solid starts, some rough starts. I mean, he's a good pitcher at a couple million a year. 20, 25 million, not so much. This is 2016 tops Brandy Chastain, USA. Two thousand six Jenny Finch. Get another Ryan Sandberg. This one from 2017, Ginter. I haven't really paid attention uh, too much of the TTM stuff now lately, but I'm assuming he's still uh, signing. 2011, Ginter Dick Vital. Definitely a, a sloppier signature. Not so much a signature itself. 
It's in black, which I definitely prefer blue, but very, very streaky. And uh, it looks okay, but uh, not ideal. So I guess if you got this graded, maybe it would get a 9, the autograph, rather than a 10. But who knows, it might get a 10 as well, because they are subjective. And here is a, another Olympic one. It's Kerry Strug. So, nice little signature there, popping in blue over the white background. All right, a few more Ginters, and then uh, a stack of some Phillies. I believe they're all Phillies over there. Here's a 2017 Barry Larkin. Grew up watching him face off against the Phillies. One of the stars in the game. Here's a 2017 Kyle Freeland. Billy Williams, 2014 Billy Williams with mustache. And then we have a 2013 Allen and Ginter Billy Williams, no mustache. It's another Jim Tomei, 2018 Jim Tomei. Got a Reese Hoskins from 2019. It's a guy who assisted with some of the fills, a couple of them, at least. Some of them I got done at the Phillies ALS Festival, some TTM on their own. But Pat Neshek did not pitch in 2020. We'll see if he comes back in 2021. I'm assuming not. I think he's uh, kind of content at uh, home, collecting cards, hanging out with his family. And, uh, you know, he, he did okay in his time in the big leagues for sure. Made, reached a couple all-star games, but really good career. Much better career than many relievers have. 2019 tops, Ginter, Michael Franco. Here's a 2008 Trevor Hoffman. So a Hall of Famer there. We got Richard Petty, 2012 Ginter. Pretty cool looking card there. Robin Yant on the 2013 Ginter. It's Jim Tomei as a Chicago White Sox. Definitely not my favorite. Probably be better if he just signed it straight here. Tried to sign it in the corner over a light spot, which makes sense, but squeezed in a little bit and not the best spot in my opinion. Here's a 2008 Allen and Ginter, Pedro Feliz. Pedro Feliz actually had the go-ahead RBI in Game 5 of the 2008 World Series. Spent two years in Philadelphia. 2008, Phils won the World Series. 2009, they won the National League pennant. Then they uh, let him leave in free agency and brought in Placido Polanco. And then they failed to reach the World Series again. It's another Charlie Manuel. Lou Brock sent this off. He passed away in the time I waited to get it back, but cool looking card, beautiful looking. Lou Brock guy signed a pretty lot, so autograph was never uh, exceptionally expensive or anything, but definitely super happy to have that in the collection. Say Jason Worth who had a fantastic career, exceptional for the Phillies. I mean, they signed him as a minor league free agent, and he uh, he did well. He worked his way into a starting role, reached an all-star game, helped the Phillies win the World Series, just crushed it in the playoffs in 08, 2009, 2010, hit a ton of homers, hit like 10 home runs or something in those three postseasons. Went to Washington and helped them kind of establish and establish themselves uh get their get themselves into the postseason a few times that taste the postseason and you know his contract expired and his career ended but he helped uh lead the way and they eventually obviously last year uh parts of those teams uh still around won a world series so 
Really good career for Jason Worth. Here's yet another Pat Neshek. Neshek got a few uh, Phillies Ginters. It's an Aaron Nola. 2018. J.P. Crawford. It's with Seattle now. Part of the Gene Segura trade. Here's my Jake Arietta Phillies Ginter. Knew I was going to have uh, one of those, but definitely wanted to get the Cubs ones as well. Michael Franco again. So he has a few different ones as well. Like I said, I just basically took at least one of each of my Phillies Allen and Ginters and said, you know what? I want to have these slabbed in the collection. So that's what I did. Scott Kingery had a very tough 2020 Missed a lot of time, kind of recovering from the virus, and then uh, just never got on track this year. Then I had a few injuries, went on the IL list a couple times. I only had like 100 at-bats. Obviously, it's a small sample size type of season, but he had like 160. So hope, hope to see him bounce back next year. We'll see. Got some Cole Hamels. Fantastic career for the Phillies cup of coffee this year with the Braves but oh wait NLCS and World Series MVP was hoping to see him back in Philadelphia this year Phil's had a shot but ended up in Atlanta another one got like three of them here so very good career this year between the injury and obviously the abbreviated season might have cost him 3,000 strikeouts he was on path to have a shot he was gonna have to extend his career and you know pitch well but might be tough this year I mean I doubt he had more than you know he probably didn't start more than two games I don't even know he probably had like five to ten strikeouts this season which you know is basically a lost season here's a 2012 Ginter Don Mattingly nice card there Here's an example of, you know, obviously fantastic player. Shout out to Triple Crown 24. He's a big Cabrera fan, but this is not exactly an exceptional looking autographed card. Of course, always happy to have a Miguel Cabrera autograph in the collection on a Ginter, but black signature, abbreviated signature, just not um not his best. But I think this is a second. I have a different year's card, uh, I believe, signed uh, for Cabrera. So definitely wanted to get it slabbed up, but just definitely not the best looking one. It's another Kingery from 2019. And I think that's it for the Ginters. I believe the rest are going to be Phillies, um, but there could be a few others mixed in. 2017 Bowman Platinum, Reese Hoskins. I have a lot of Reese, and I think I just sent them all in. And he struggled early this year and then caught fire, was unbelievable for a few weeks, and then unfortunately got hurt. That's one of the things that hurt the Phillies down the stretch. I think they were 5-12 and 12 in the last 17 games of the year, and Hoskins missed them all. But there's a nice signature on the 2019 top, so it'll be interesting to see what his future is. They have Alec Bohm, Baum, who had a great debut this year, came up as a third baseman. I think a lot of people think he'll eventually be a first baseman. But the question is, does he play third base next year? Or do maybe they move in the first? I thought Hoskins was a potential trade candidate. Uh, maybe to add an arm or something. He does have value as a low-cost uh, power hitter. But now with the injury uncertainty, I'm not so sure that'll happen. It's a 2019 Heritage. Heritage always look great as long as they don't have the facsimile signature. Here's a relic card out of Tier 1 autograph added to it definitely uh makes it a more uh attractive card this is a 2018 bowman platinum hoskins this is a really nice looking insert set signature doesn't really pop as much as i expect it or anticipate it i think this would look great if it had a paint pen signature that would uh stand out maybe a little more here's another uh nice looking insert set the bowman sterling insert set from 2018 bowman Sterling Continuity. Looks great. Beautiful card. 
Here's another insert. This insert is nice, but it just feels lacking, all this open space. And when you add a signature to it, it definitely enhances it overall. So it's the sitting red insert from Finest. Here's a basic Bowman, 2018 Bowman Hoskins. Twenty sixteen Bowman Platinum Scott Kingery. This one was done at spring training as a favor from a fellow autograph collector. Man, the card is so nice looking. So I think I got a couple of them. A couple number of Kingeries here. That was back when he was still just a prospect and not really sought after. Then he became kind of a hotter prospect and a rookie and you know, things have cooled down in the last couple of years for sure, but he was a bigger deal there for a while. Here's a Clearwater Threshers card. Another Kiggery from Tops. Some of these, I think I got a couple done via TTM as well. 2018 Tops. It's a Pat Neshek Blue Refractor from 2017 Tops Chrome. And I had to get this one done. Put the sunglasses on. Sort of like the 1970 card, famously features sunglasses. A nice Nishak there. Got a number of Nishaks done. Obviously, I got a lot of Pat Nishak autographs. Here's the gold. The gold just looks good. I mean, the color parallels were so nice there for a few years. 2020, uh, not a fan of. We'll see what the color parallels look like in 2021 tops, though. Future Stars from 2018 Tops, Aaron Nola. Aaron Nola from Stadium Club. Aaron Nola from 2018 Tops Opening Day, Road to Opening Day. Tops Now rope, Road to Opening Day. Jake Arietta. Back when the Phils first signed him. Didn't really live up to the contract. But, you know... Still had some good times watching him pitch. Is a Cesar Hernandez actually having a very good year with the Cleveland Indians? David West on the 19th. Oh, just realized that's definitely mislabeled. It should say Upper Deck. But yeah, I'm doing a, a run of 1993 Phillies. 2018 Tops Heritage, Nick Pavetta. In the time this was sent off, there was still some hope that this guy, because he has good stuff, you know, could put things together. And then he had like a 20 ERA for the Phils out of the bullpen and just kept giving up home runs. And then he was traded to Boston. Pitched, I think, twice for the Red Sox. Was okay. He does have the ability to be really good. Just will he ever put it together? So Nick Williams I sent in. Probably shouldn't have. Um, definitely not a strong-looking auto. Just... Uh, very light, doesn't pop. I like the card a lot, just the autograph doesn't look great. Oduble Herrera, he's a clown. Um, he was an all-star for the Phils. A lot of ability, but some off-the-field issues, and uh, he has not played for them since those issues arrived. Some point last year, I think it was like around the midpoint. Uh, he's still Philly's property right now, and they still had to pay him, but he was removed from the 40-man roster. And uh, basically, I got this one just to uh, complete the team set from Gypsy Queen in 2018. And this is the only one I have that's not signed in blue. This one was signed in black, Aaron Altair. I just couldn't find a blue one. But uh, it's a good-looking set. 2018 Gypsy Queen is a really, really nice-looking set. And the signatures, generally speaking, pop on them. So I think the Phillies had like eight or... 8 to 10 cards, and I was lucky enough to get them all signed. Here's a 1962 Tops Johnny Callison. Sweet blue signature there. Got this one in person at a card show way back in like 1989, 1990, maybe 91. Somewhere around that time frame. But very cool. And then the final two are a 2006 Tops. Ginter Mini, Felipe Alou, very cool. 
watched him manage a lot growing up. And then this one I just sent in just to kind of send in. It's a Bud Selig. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, you know, some people, uh, well, a lot of people don't like him. I suppose there's some people like him, but you don't hear too much. He's one of those guys who got in the Hall of Fame, just kind of got in to get in. Uh, but that is a terrible signature. I mean, the minis are tough because there's only so much space, but like the flat out sign straight over your face. So, I don't know. Thought it was kind of funny. Figure what the hell. Why not get it slabbed? But that's the order. 55 minutes. I was able to reintroduce a ton of cards back into the collection. Finally back. You know, they were out for five plus months, but finally back home. Always a great feeling to uh, get things encapsulated, get them authenticated, and get them back into your hands, into the collection. That's uh, pretty awesome and some stuff for other people. So, I know it was lengthy. I appreciate everyone who watched all 56 minutes of this uh, comment below let me know that you did and let me know some of your favorites and i will talk to you next time have a great one